100% of the time, which isn't true, but if you believe that 100% of the time, even if we're carrying a handgun, that even carrying the handgun puts the public at large at risk, and we are 100% of the time not able to defend ourselves, that we should just be willing victims? Well, you know, you asked the question in a, in a, in a uh, you know, a, 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 a kind of, uh, how can I best say it? You know, the choices are very stark. You're going to be shot and killed, or you're going to be a victim, a victim walking around without your gun, or the public's going to be safe. So that, to me, becomes a numbers game, okay? If you, you know, let me, and I'll give you, I'll give you a, an example that will explain my answer. Uh, we have laws that people have to wear seat belts, right? But there are many cases reported, not hundreds or thousands, but a number of cases that are reported where the very fact that the person was not wearing their seat belt allowed the, uh, what do they call it, the jaws of uh, death or whatever it is, allowed them to be extracted from their car and saved. Had they been wearing their seatbelt, they would have drowned or, you know, not been able, you know, would have, would have died in the car. So you could then make the argument that, uh, you know, maybe we shouldn't make people wear seatbelts. And that becomes a numbers game. You can't make policy on the fact that in a few cases, people not wearing seatbelts were saved. You have, to, you have to go with what mo is most likely to happen. And I've asked you a, a few times, I've asked you, you know, and, and I'll ask again, just give me a scenario where you're outside, okay, where you're outside and you will have to use your gun to defend yourself. Well, if I, was, me, if, I, if I was sitting in that theater when that guy came in and started popping rounds off, I certainly would like to be in a situation where I could return fire. Even if it might not yeah. have saved my life, I could have ended it. And there are cases all over the Internet where mass shootings were averted and the shooter ended his life prematurely because an armed subject or a police officer was nearby, and as soon as they f met somebody of equal uh, firepower, uh, they ended the assault. So there's, there's, and you have to understand, too, a lot of these go unreported because basically nothing happened. But we have a caller on the line now. Welcome. You're on the air with Elliot Feynman of National Gun Victims Action Council. You're call, uh, welcome, caller. Your first name and where are you calling from? Hi, uh, I'm Ryan from uh, Davis, California. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Do you have a question for Mr. Uh, Feynman? Uh, it'll come up as we go. All right, you got to <laughs> call in with a question. Uh this is Ryan Lee of Rifles and Reason, by the way, one of the uh, uh, pro-gun uh, Facebook pages, and been on guest on the show before. Your picture just came up. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ryan. What's your question? Um, yeah. Um, going uh, into the part where uh, he was uh, talking about how. Uh, sorry, I'm outside, so uh, I'm gonna have to hold for a little bit. <laughs> Holy cow, this is in traffic. <laughs> What's it's going that, on? It's that California traffic out there. Now, he had somebody blowing a horn, I think, was just messing with him when oh, he was trying to be on the phone. Uh, Did he say he was from Davis, California? I well, missed. Well, see, Mr. Feynman, here's the deal. You say that every single time somebody is carrying a firearm, that they've never been able to defend themselves. No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. Or that, that you. What you, haven't said that. Uh, you what your I'm exact words, that there sir. Are sir. Cases to, yeah, all right. I wrote it down. You said 100 percent of the time you will not be able to defend yourself, and you're putting Here's the public I, at risk when I, you're carrying a gun. That, I, I wrote it down when that, you said it. Here's here's what I said. So maybe it was not understood, or maybe I didn't say it correctly. So you know, let me say it again. What I'm saying is that you can never defeat the element of surprise. Are there cases where people used their gun because they had their gun, and because they had their gun, they defended themselves? Yes, of course there are. But they're so remote and so few that we can't, for me, you know, I can't be comfortable walking around with, you know, going to a restaurant, a bar, you know, or any place, I'm a ball game, whatever, with people carrying guns. It's just the, the, the odds aren't right. You know, the, 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 
the few people, the few cases where people have in fact defended themselves and they only could defend themselves because they had a gun, you know, doesn't justify, you know, the the uh, the position that everyone should be walking around with guns. It just doesn't. Okay. Um, so I have a question in uh, regards to that. This is Mike again. So um, with, with that idea being said, should it be told to our Secret Service agents that sh- they should not carry guns because 100% of the time they will not be able to respond to a shooter who's shooting at our president or to any other sort of action that is being taken it's towards scary. our president? It's interesting that you bring up su- Secret Service, Mike. Uh and I will answer your question, but I want to make this point because it, it makes one of the points I'm making. When President Reagan came out of the hotel, he was surrounded by Secret Service people, and he was also surrounded by D.C. police, and the only job of these people was to look for trouble. They were trained to look for it, and that was their only, you know, only purpose for being there. And yet, a kid you know, who didn't have much experience shooting, had a six shooter, got off all six shots and hit four people they hit four people before they could subdue him. And now, no. if the kid had, had a semi automatic, you know, he'd have done a lot more damage. But the point is the element of surprise always wins. And and the whole always. thing being I said say that word always as if it's some well, kind of uh, axiomatic absolute. And to be honest, it's not. And I can personally testify because I have personally stopped a, sh- a trespasser on my property. I didn't know whether he was armed or not, but he lost his element of surprise. You know what? I was able to chase him off my property. With well, you surprise them. That's the whole yes. point. You surprise them. And, yes. So the, yeah, and, and, uh, and so what, what was the thematic always? I mean, okay, so, so. It's, very, it's easily falsifiable. All right. Uh, Ryan, thanks for your question. Uh, so what would be a law to prevent somebody from getting the element of surprise on you? You can't stop it. It's no, you know, we have laws it, about DUIs. We have laws about not driving on the wrong side of the road. But, but people still happens, do. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, that, that happens. And, you know, we have a... a a rash of that happening now in Chicago for some reason. Okay, but but, but here's but here's my point. You, you can't defend against everything. Then you why? Can't. Okay, then why are you punishing me as a gun owner? Because you're carrying a gun in public punishes me as a citizen who doesn't carry guns. If you if you don't come up to me, or you don't try to harm me, or you don't try to take from me something that's mine and threaten my life, then you have nothing to fear from me. Well, that's not the case, though, because accidents happen. People get into arguments. Guns, you know, you you should you well know, having been a police officer, that even the police, the New York City police, did an 11-year study as to how good they were in gunfights because they spent a lot of money each year training people two or three times a year, and they miss seven out of ten shots. So since you're not going to hit your target 100% of the time, then you should just be totally disarmed. Well, what happened to those seven shots they missed? With with that being said, said well, but 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 see, but see, here's the, here's here where we're going to disagree, Mr. Feynman, and okay, then I'll let you well, and, then, and then I'll let you have the last word as we round up the show. And again, I, I appreciate that you came on the show, but here's where we're going to disagree. You're absolutely right about the element of surprise, but just because the element of surprise exists does not mean that the legislation or other folks need to tell me and other gun owners how to conduct ourselves with our firearms that we take responsibility for. We have 300 million firearms in in the United States. We have well over 70% of the population that own legally firearms. Yet less than 30,000, which, and it's sad and it sucks, and it sucks when people lose their lives, and especially as a police officer, I'll tell you, it sucks when they lose their lives, and it, and, it's, and it doesn't make any sense. But that's a very small population. And if somebody's going to kill themselves, and they've already made that decision, that's a done deal. And whether they use a gun, slit their wrists, hang themselves, uh, banning guns, registering guns, restricting my rights as a gun owner because of the actions of others... Uh, 
just makes your same argument. You know, you can't you can't stop people from not wearing seatbelts. Well, well I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the same me, argument on you. You can't restrict my rights to own a gun because of the actions of a few. Now, I'll let you have the final word. Okay. By the way, I might want to really uh, thank you for being, uh, you know, such a gracious host and for the show going down, you know, exactly the way you said it was. I said I've, it's been very pleasant being here, you know, and I'm happy to come again, you know, uh, in the future. And uh, I thank you for, you know, hosting the show in such a, a gentlemanly way. Here's may, may, Maybe I can reach you this way. Uh, it's one of the things, by the way, that I want to test down the line. You know, when you read the Second Amendment several times, it, it talks about arms. And, you know, the actual definition of arms, according to the UN, I think there's 38 types or 37 types of arms, ranging from biological weapons and grenades and uh, uh, all kinds of things. So let's say... I could argue, which I'm going to someday, that I should be allowed to carry ricin. You know, because I feel, I feel at risk, and I feel that the best way to protect myself is for me to carry, walk around with ricin, so that if anybody shows up, I can take out the ricin and, and, and shoot it, you know, blow it at them. Well, would you be comfortable with that? You know, because if I happen to be near you, in a supermarket or a, 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 a you know a, a a Walmart or whatever, and I fell or had an accident, and the ricin you know got released into the air, you die. So, and if I told you, look, you know, just because you don't like me carrying ricin, and because I can't defend myself a hundred percent of the time, uh, I want to carry ricin. I think you'd be concerned, and that's what I'm trying to get across. That's what I'm trying to get across, that I'm concerned. I know people are not logical. They're psychological. I've seen people almost get into it, you know, over parking spaces. We just had snow here, and people would dig out a parking space, and somebody would come and take it. And if they had guns, they'd have shot, they'd have shot each other. I've seen cabbies, you know. Uh, I, I just don't trust people walking around with guns because they're people. And if if you could show me that, boy, walking around with guns keeps us... And by the way, there aren't 70 million gun owners. There's 35, 35 million gun-owning households, and uh, it's, not, it's not 70 million gun owners. Most of, the, most of the households own, you know, five or six or seven guns. But the point is, if it could be shown that people were much safer walking around with guns, you know, I would support that. But it can't be shown. What would make people much safer is if we stop getting, letting the criminals get guns. And we can do that. We can do that, but we can't do it because your side clings to this worthless, slippery slope argument. And again, do you understand government. that any laws that are directed towards or, or, or that are written using the reason that we need to keep guns out of the hands of bad guys only affect those of us who follow the law? Yeah, and there's a and there's an interesting thing because I've heard I've heard this many times. If we have a, a minute for me to make this point, uh, yeah, we have thirty uh, seconds. Argument, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, it's your show. So you, well, you I mean, we're me. we're closing out on the show, so we've got about thirty seconds, and then I got to do all the okay. closing stuff. So. Well, I, I can't do it in thirty <laughs> seconds, so we'll save it for another time. But it's the answer to the uh, uh, bromide that you know. Uh, if you pass any laws, the law-abiding citizens will follow it, and pretty soon only the citizen, only the criminals will have guns. So let's leave it there because I can give you some really interesting information because we know what happens in a country where only the criminals have guns. We actually have that data. So let's save that for the next time we talk. In the meantime, uh, my daughter graduated from UT Austin, so... Great Hook 'em city. horns, <laughs> and I've been there a couple of times. Hook 'em horns. We got an Aggie sitting across from me, so he's not real happy Egg right now. <laughs> okay, well, you'll have to go to that Savino Wine Place. I, I wrote down their website because they seem to have a product. I, I love what they said. Have 
Tuesday wine is fresh on Saturday. Absolutely. Well, he's actually uh, the Savino family is part of Armed Radio. Joe Savino, Joe Rocks. Had-